Hi, I'm Julian, part of the product team here at Apprise. In this brief video, I'll provide you with an overview of what the Apprise SDK is, what it can do, and also show you a quick demo of all the available key capabilities in our WebView solution. Now let's get started. Apprise has been around for 25 years. We started as a PDF processing API and built out our rendering engine, editing and document manipulation and processing capabilities, and added also many other supported file formats next to PDF, such as MS Office, CAD, videos, image files, you really name it. This demo is for the WebViewer SDK, which is part of the Web SDK. However, the Apprise SDK is available on all major platforms and frameworks, which includes web, mobile such as iOS, Android, UWP, as well as desktop Windows, Linux Server and Mac OS. We also have the iTech suite of SDKs for document processing and manipulation. And for web, we do cover all popular frameworks such as React, Next.js, Angular, Vue, and many more. In addition to the different web frameworks, we also support integrations into low-code applications that includes a variety such as Salesforce, Appian, Mendex, but also SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and others. Now here we're in our WebView demo. This one is publicly available for you to completely explore all the functionalities that our web SDK with the WebViewer UI layer has to offer. And this is a WebViewer web component. It can be embedded within your application as an NPM module. You can also still resort to the iframe way of implementing it, but web component is fully supported. In WebViewer, you can open PDFs, images, office files. You can see here if you want to explore our sample files or you can also open files from a URL and of course your local file storage. They all open client side in the browser, including all those file formats. The office files are also supported client side. This makes WebViewer really efficient to scale and very secure to use as files do not need to leave your own ecosystem. Now jumping a bit into the features itself, if we're opening the side panel, you can see our page manipulation capabilities. If you want to change the orientation of a page or for example, want to review pages really quickly, if you open them in an integration like Salesforce, you can quickly change what they look like. We rotate clockwise, replace pages, extract pages, or delete a couple of pages if you need to do that. Next, let's see what review and approval can look like. So imagine we have this page and we're really trying to create this marketing asset. So I have a couple of comments. I will just make a free highlight here. I don't think this is good. Um, I want to underline a couple of things. So I will just make another highlight here. I'll highlight this text over here. And what then opens up is the way to comment on that. So I can make a comment here on the right and you see the comment panel on the right where the review and approval really happens. So I can tag other users. If I, for example, want to tag Ruby, please make the change. I can tag and mention other users in my system and make sure that they will make a change. And then if I'm the other user, I can go in here and change the annotation status. For example, I can say this has been completed. And then if you go back into the comments section later on, you can also sort the comments based on what the status of the comment is. So let's say I want to see all the ones that do not currently have a completion. Um, I see all the open comments right here. The annotations are also fully customizable, not only in the way that they appear up here, but also in the way um, that they appear in terms of style, opacity, stroke, color, and so on. And you can set these annotations based on user permissions or based on the groups of users that are using the annotations. So now we've seen the ability to change the customization on annotations itself. But what if you want to remove annotation altogether? You can also do that by hiding and showing UI elements. So here I could remove all of those or a selected amount of the annotation tools. So if I want to remove highlighting ability, I can do that here or removing annotation tools altogether. If I want to avoid people copying and pasting content out of my PDF, I can also just remove text selection. Now you see I can no longer select the text and I can also remove the download button right here, the print PDF button, and really any other piece of the UI can be easily removed as part of the UI customization. Another really common workflow is form generation from office templates. So for most forms, they will typically start their life in an office application such as a Microsoft Word document. And you see here, you have dynamic fields of the form in squiggly brackets. And those squiggly brackets can be written really easily by any end user. There's no programming magic involved. So it's really friendly to make changes directly to the template. And then you can use WebViewer to merge this with a data source such as a, a JSON file. 
and you can make sure that the JSON file uh, data co columns will match the squiggly bracket pieces. So for example, here we see this is the data that will be merged. And then once you do fill the template, you see it has been filled with images, but also with names and with um, dynamic data content that was merged into the document. And that's really part of our document generation process where the data comes directly from the data source and is merged with an office file into a filled PDF document. Now, if you're coming across an already finished form, such as this individual tax return, you can also merge it with JSON data. And that would be typically a process that happens in the background. So Web SDK can visualize this process, but you can also do it as part of our server processing. So I will take the sample JSON data here. This is just for me to take a look at it for the demo purpose, and I can fill it and you see it has all filled the data in there. And of course, it can also happen exactly the other way around. So you can export any of the data into a central database if an end user or if your staff members are filling in forms like these. Now, if you have filled the form, typically you would sign the form. You can add your own digital signature to validate that the document has not been tampered with and that no changes have been made since the signature was applied. So I'll just sign here. I'll use these signatures, I'll make sure that I apply the approval and I verify it. And now it shows that the document has not been modified since it was signed. And once I make any modifications, such as by PDF text editing, this validity will be void and you will have to validate it once again with your signature by the authorized party. And one such change that would change the validity of digital signatures would be if you actually edit the text layer of a document that changes its content. So other than the annotation layer, we also support PDF text editing right on the text layer of the document. So you can make changes similar to a word processor. I'll just change this to word processor text editing as an example. And you see it works by reflowing into the second line if it becomes too long, but I can also make changes to the size of the box, move it around here. So it really works very similar to what you ex would expect if I make a uh, another line here, um, it will go into two lines, but I, it will also do that automatically if I make it more condensed. And you can change all the formatting here. You can change the font, the size, the alignment, the color, and so on. But sometimes you wouldn't want to just edit it or it's not feasible to edit it. So what you would want to do is to redact sensitive information. And you can do that either manually or programmatically by entering, for example, certain terms that you would want to redact. So here we have our sample document. And if I want to redact one of the partners names of this, um, of this fictional company, I will just search for it. It found it on multiple occasions in the page. Um, I will say redact all and it will redact all the occurrences of this partner's name. I can also have certain patterns of information that I would want to redact. So if I want to redact credit card numbers, for example, that are different every single time, I can search for these patterns and I will find those sample credit card numbers here in the bottom. And then I can either redact all or I can also select certain numbers to be redacted. So I'll just redact all of those here as well. So those are different ways of redaction. There's also area redact. If you want to redact, for example, images such as this watermark, I just want to make sure it's hidden and that would redact graphical areas. That is all for this video. So if you want to learn more and see what else is available, please check out our documentation link below our homepage and of course the rest of this YouTube channel. Should you have any questions, don't hesitate to just ask them in the comment section below. And of course, you can always get in touch directly via our Discord channel. Thank you very much and see you next time.